can liken to you. May all your dreams that come from God come true. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Mm -mm -mm. Let us turn in the scriptures to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. You know, I've been ruminating, meditating, and contemplating over the communications on yesterday about a good doctor. Uh -huh. He made us aware of our needs. We need to know before we go. We need to stop before we shop. Mm -hmm. And we need to pull it back before we pop. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 7, I want to read verse 22 and verse 25. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, we can take those two verses and think on them all day long and, and the Lord would give us understanding in all things pertaining to the truth. Understanding, as we've said recently, is what we should end up with after so much accumulation of knowledge even with the inspiration of God called wisdom we need understanding the apostle Paul when he speaks of full assurance he speaks of three levels of assurance, assurance. the full assurance of faith full assurance of hope right. and the full assurance of understanding. Amen. Now, in case someone came up short in understanding where my remarks were coming from, on yesterday after the good doctor shared much needed information under the inspiration. Um, we want to help some one or two or three or 10 or 12 or 50 how to appropriate uh, the spirit how to experience a release of the spirit uh, so we can enjoy uh, the life of God on the inside just as believers um, cannot get well just because we want to or even need to. We cannot experience a release of the spirit unless we know how to. Uh, you remember a message that we shared some time ago with a little, little box that we push a button 
excuse me, excuse me, can someone let me out of here? Excuse me, excuse me, can someone let me out of here? And I've been sharing that message for quite a few years and I still have the little box and it yet reminds us that unless the inner man that spirit man that regenerated man that germinated man Amen. that man that Christ is joined to that has eternal life that's everlasting never ending unless we're going to get the benefit of the life of God on the inside we need to know how to release him to go to work otherwise if that inner man where Christ lives is not released to go to work but find himself living in solitary confinement in the padded cell of the heart we would be as if we're not even born again, even though we are. It would be as if <clears throat> we don't have God living inside of us, even though he, he does. And we'll be sick. We'll be beat down, depleted, psychologically defeated. Solically vexed and overwhelmed. And as Paul said, we'll walk as men. As if no one would ever known that we knew Christ. The doctors in the hospital won't know it. The psychiatrists, when we go to get counseling, won't know it. When we go to school, whether it's elementary, the secondary, it's the university, the professors won't know it. Won't know it. Because the hidden man of the heart, which is in the sight of God of great price, would do us little or no good in time and in space. And so we'll pull from the wrong tree and become the byproducts of the wisdom of man. Let me read those verses again. Verse 22 says, But I delight in the law of God after the inward man. This is the apostle writing to us. He says, I delight in the law of God not after any part of my being but one part, one part. and that's the inward man Amen. there's no other part of us that delight in the law of God no. the spirit man is the only part of us that delight in the law of God Amen. and the law of God for us New Testament believers is the law of love mm -hmm. the law of faith the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that have made us free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. The law of the mind. That law that's hidden in the inner man is the only uh, delight that we should have. Our delight should start from the inside and work up out. But the law of God that we've been born of will not be released to go to work unless the agency of release goes to work. Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, the agency of release, I myself, the spirit man, the hidden man, that's been living in solitary confinement in the padded cell of the heart serve the law of God through the agency of the mind the I myself inner man serve the law of God 
But if that is not happening, my flesh is in control, serving the law of sin. The sin that's in the members that have congregational meetings every day with sickness and disease. Weaknesses, infirmities, demonic activities, and everything under the natural sun. And we get confused so often because we think that the the operations of the gifts of the Spirit mean that our minds have employed these gifts to the mind's spirituality. When the gifts of the Spirit are operative because God superimposes his divinity upon our humanity without the agency of our mentality. Amen. That's why stupid people can speak in tongues. This is why adulterous people can prophesy. This is why preachers can preach and get a multitude saved and still be living in adultery. The gifts are gifts. Speaking of the giver, not the receiver. So believers are so mixed up and confused as to what's going on with them when the gifts are operating. God gives us the gifts of the Spirit because he knows that we can't operate in our own humanity to get far at all in life. So he comes in and superimposes his divinity upon our humanity and gives us an inspiration, an inspirational moment where we have a word of knowledge. We have a word of wisdom. We can have some faith that we didn't earn through the study of the word. We can have discernment of spirits and, and get out the way. We can see healings take place. We can see miracles take place. We can prophesy and bring comfort and we can speak in tongues and interpret those tongues and not even be spiritual. All you got to do is ask the church at Corinth who had all the gifts. They didn't come behind in any good gift, but they were just as carnal as they could be. And the Paul said, I couldn't talk to you as to spiritual people because you're carnal. You got all these gifts working, but you don't understand the real nature of your inner man. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. We'll pull in at verse 16. Verse 16 reads, that he, God, would grant you and me according to the riches of his glory. Can you say that, his glory? His glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Can we say his spirit? in the inner man. Amen. And with that in mind, keep your finger there, Proverbs 18, 14. Proverbs 18, 14. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear in other words, the spirit of a man will determine how well he'll be or not be. And that's the natural man. But we're not just natural people. We're supernatural people. Because God lives in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Christ lives in us. Glory to God. And he that has joined to the Lord being one spirit, the prayer is, if we pray and believe what we pray, 
The inner man can be strengthened with the might of God to cast off infirmities. And with the agency of the mind that give release to the spirit that's been strengthened with the might of God, we can release the spirit to go to our hair to our feet. Can illuminate the mind and give it more light. Can regulate the heart and make it more right. And can invigorate all the party body parts so that we don't get sick, disease, broken down, and die before our time. So we have to stop and think. We can do all the psychological, dietary, we can do all the scientific, do all of the manipulations, we can do all of the download of information, we can do everything we can possibly do, but it won't come up to a spiritual mind. It won't come up to the release of the spirit. It won't come up to the life of God. It will not release the word that's in our spirit. It will not uh, uh, help germinate that word to take root and bear fruit. Someone asked me recently, uh, what is good ground? What is good ground for seed? Jesus said, is a good and honest heart. Right. A good and honest heart. See, God makes the heart good, but we have to agree with God's goodness to be honest. Right. Got to be good and honest. Otherwise, we're not going to produce God's desired results for our lives. And God's desire for our lives is that we will prosper yes. and be in health even as our souls prosper. And Peter put it this way in 1 Peter 1, 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And Paul put it this way in, in, in Ephesians. He says, uh, no, not, not Paul, but James put it this way in his epistle, uh, that we should lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Right. Do you know what superfluity of naughtiness? Superfluity of naughtiness is the stuff that we do we know we ought not to do. We just keep on doing it. We know we shouldn't be smoking, but we keep on smoking. We shouldn't be drinking the, 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 so that that alcohol go up to our brains and space out the neutrons from the protons and the electrons and all that and slow our thinking apparatus down. We think slow enough as it is. Let us have all filthiness. Do you not know what filthiness is? Filthiness is uncleanness. Let us have all dirty toilet tops. Let us have all dirty sinks. Let us have all dirty floors. Let us have all dirty underwear. Let us have all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness. Amen. Not intellectualization, but meekness. Not argumentation, but meekness. Not, oh, I don't know about that, but meekness. Amen. Don't be afraid to eat it. You got four stomachs. Don't worry about it. If it's wrong, it's only going to go on down to stomach number one. It's going to come back up, and if it's not usable, it's going to be regurgitated, and it's not going to do you any good. I mean, it's not going to do you any harm. The final result is that we're going to receive with meekness the ingrafted word. Amen. The final, final results, receive with meekness the ingrafted word. When the word is ingrafted, it means that we don't have to remember the word anymore. Amen. The word remembers us. The word becomes a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. The word talks to us all the time. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 
oftentimes I share with Sister Smith um, that the Holy Ghost told me to do this and the Holy Ghost told me to do that. And later on, the doctor says, you know, or the dietitian says, and I said, well, the Holy Ghost told me that a long time ago. Focus on the yolk and not the white of an egg. I mean, the Holy Ghost told me that uh, uh, just watching uh, a documentary on, uh, 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 on bears. He said, now watch how this bear eats. Now he's standing there in, in the stream and the, and the salmon going upstream and the bear waiting to catch his salmon. Right. You know, and he catches one. He takes it to the side. He doesn't gobble that salmon down. He strips that salmon of what he needs and leaves the rest. A bear knows how to eat. And God wants us to, to at least get our lesson from the bear. And when it comes to doing things, he said, go to the ant. And the ant don't have anybody to tell her what to do. The ant come out knowing what to do. When we're born again, get this. Uh, 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 we need not be taught how to love. God teaches us how to love. Because he lives in us. For the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. Certain things should be automatic. But some things we have to learn. And that is, we need to learn Christ. Amen. We need to learn the truth as it is in Jesus. Then we need to know how to apply his life. My son, attend to my word. Incline your ear to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they, the words, are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The word health is translated in the Hebrew as medicine. Now magnemit the believers that don't believe that the word of God is medicine. I guarantee you in the United States of America 90% of all believers don't believe God's word is medicine. And if we believe it for one second, it's because of the superimposition of divinity upon our humanity to enlighten our mentality to believe it for one second. And then it's back to business as usual. The word of God is medicine to all our flesh. The word of God is medicine to ourselves. The word of God is medicine to our blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And the, the, the body without the spirit is dead. But we have Christ in our spirit, living in our bodies. Divine functionality of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is medicine to all our flesh. The word of God. Now we must with intentionality and with intensity believe what we read. We must believe what we read. And you know what? The only way some of us are going to believe what we read, we got to stop doing stuff. We got to stop doing stuff that keeps us from believing what we read. It's called arterial motives. We got something else in mind. We want to do something that we ought not be doing. We want to go places we ought not be going. We are, we're going to buy stuff that we ought not be buying. And it keeps us from believing what we read. So we never get to the point of being intensive about believing God's word for what it says. He says, attend to my word. I learned what attend to when I was a little boy. My parents said, you better attend to that floor. All right. I knew exactly what it meant. Right. I better get on there and clean that floor up. Incline your ear to my saying. In other words, you better listen to what I said. Did you hear what I said? 
That's what God is saying. Did you hear what I said? He says, uh, uh, keep them in the midst of your heart. Right. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouths are going to speak. So keep the words in the midst of your heart. Right. Be thinking about the word all the time. All the time. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Yeah. Don't let the word depart from your eyes. Have the word conspicuously placed in different places where you see the word all the time. Yeah. A prophetic word that come over your life. Hang it and frame it. Frame it and hang it. Make sure you hear God's word, see God's word. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For those words that you laid hold to are life. Amen. Glory to God. And life fight against death. Life fight against everything that's antichrist. And those very words Our medicine Amen. to all our flesh. Amen. Every bit of it. Amen. Every bit of our flesh. Amen. So we need a release of the Spirit. If I, re if, if I lay hands on you and there was a release of the Spirit by the laying on of hands, guess what? You won't know how to release your Spirit. You'll experience temporary release and the benefits that, that come from that. But you'll have to be told later on, stir up the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands. In other words, you're dormant again because you never learned how to use the agency of your mind to release your inner man. And you find yourself having to drink some wine for your stomach's sake. And be suffering from the spirit of fear that God has not given us. But he's given us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So let's stop wasting our time and get our minds where they belong. They're the agency of release. Glory to God. We can be filled with the spirit and our cup run over just like that. Oh, glory to God. Because my mind says, Spirit, come on, let's go to work. So with my myself serve the law of God that I delight in. Amen. The law of the spirit of Christ, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the one that was released because of the agency of the mind, have freed me from the law of sin and death. Amen. Glory to God. Ooh. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen for today.